Hi there everyone and welcome back to The Four Marketers and you have your four favourite people on the couch again <laughs> um, and we are going to be discussing websites and more specifically website marketing and what makes a great website and everything to do with that. So, so today let's get started, let's make, uh, let's make some headway around what contributes to a great website and Mike is the best place to start. <laughs> I mean Mike yeah. and I'm guessing websites just a massive a huge topic to cover so mm. I mean I would love insights on what would you say is like a key thing mm. that we should look into when it comes to marketing and website. Well so true I mean we're all involved quite heavily in yeah. your website right yeah. from you know whether it's right from the very concepts of a, a brand identity through the content and the video we're yeah. all very heavily involved. Um, where I would always start with a website project is looking at the architecture. Uh, and it's often a step that when we think about website design and, and builds, is often skipped. People just think, oh, I can just go out and get a, you know, either a template mm. from, from you know, uh, any of those template sites um, that you just sort of download and then kind of get started and then throw in a bit of content, add a couple of you know, stock images. Should be right. There I go, yeah, there's my website. Because a lot of customers um, just come to us and, and come to you and I'm sure all of us and just say, oh, just build me a website. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and literally, that's exactly yeah, that's what we do. that's the conversation. Yeah. I just want a new website. Mm. Yeah, that's the, well. <laughs> you've read a lot of our inquiry forms. Yeah. 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 I need a website. You know? Mine too. So do you want to explain like what architecture is yeah. and, and how that sort of works. Absolutely, yeah. So when we look at the actual site, before we really start to look at the, the, the content or even the branding elements, what we think about is in terms of the layout structure, and it's, it's no different to, to building a house. You know, what we might do is start off with a few sketches and start in the rough out. What kind of, what do we want to communicate through the site? You know, why are we, what, what pages are we going to create? Why are we creating those pages? Most importantly, like, what do we want the, the user to, to do or to gain from that page? Uh, and what do we want them to do as a, an outcome of and being on that page? I think that's the key, isn't it? Because it's often when people come to you and say, just just create me a website, they, they're they almost forgetting as to why they're creating yeah, the website. Yeah, cart before the horse. In oh, the, yeah. in the yeah. first place. Yeah. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of different reasons to have pages in a website. But at the end of the day, you want the customers to go through a journey and an experience mm -hmm. where they connect with your business and your brand and come with an outcome now the outcome that you want as a business is that you want them to either contact you and ask for the service or that you want them to buy the product. So if you haven't considered that bit, which is the architecture of what experience are they getting and then how am I going to lead them on that journey? And why is that journey going to be really good mm. and positive for them and result in, may not be the first time they come through, but at some stage it's going to result in that, that click. And that's, that's what yeah. I think you're talking about, isn't it? And exactly. there's also, I'm there's the fact that with SEO and everything else these days, there's so much that happens in the background, oh, yes. right? To make sure that <laughs> everything's actually set up correctly and that you can use the website to the best of its ability. Absolutely. I mean, well, the, the big thing too is, and we've talked about this many times, where we look at planning things out and just thinking things through first just allows us to get all of the right, you know, all the different pieces together um, so that they fit nicely right from the We'll start or as we then you know basically build the site and put it all together rather than getting halfway through it and then going oh you know what would be a great yes. video that'd <laughs> be superb yeah go, that would be superb yeah. 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 that but. would have been superb to discuss earlier yeah, yeah. yeah. we're halfway through the build here yeah. you know just it's it, which is no different to you know building a house where you get halfway through and you go hmm could have the garage the over there and yeah. you go, oh yeah, that would be cool, but you know. <laughs> a little and, late now. And some of the yeah. best like websites that I've created have been after your architect architecture stuff because it's like suddenly you have intent, mm -hmm. you have direction, you have like a, a structure to build with. And mm -hmm. see, that's that's what I think, like Kristen, you were alluding yeah. to, is that um, the reason why this step gets skipped is because it's almost like assumed but actually the assumption is not correct. Like mm -hmm. it's like, oh, well, home, and there's a service page, and yeah. that's it. It's right? an about us. Yeah, an and, and, it's, yeah. and it's not that that's wrong. It's more like you're starting from the top down rather than the bottom up. And it's yeah. like you're trying to, with the architecture, you're trying to sort of go, okay, we want people to flow through to this naturally yeah. so that then they learn about us and warm their, themselves yeah. before they contact mm -hmm. us. And, and I that's think that's that. what the architecture piece oh, does. It huge. forces the customer, as in our customer, not their Cl customer. Clients, yeah, it yeah. forces our clients to really think about, okay, so what is it that they their customer really wants mm. to see? And 
why would they keep clicking through? And what's mm -hmm. good information for them? And why are they building up yeah. a, an affection for my product or service? And I mm -hmm. think that's, that's really key. Because that then, you know, if they've done a lot of work on that and they've actually done work on well, what is that journey look like, Mm -hmm. the, the design phase and the you know the, the content, the content writing, phase yeah. and then the, the you know the top. support pieces of amazing video around that just everything slots into yeah. place because you know what you're designing for and why you're designing it. I mean we've yeah. seen that with video a few times where um, websites getting developed at the same time but they didn't communicate during that phase that they were going to do video and we spent all this time and money and effort to create this beautiful video that will clearly articulate who they are or you know, have thought leadership pieces. But because it wasn't part of the architecture, it kind of just gets thrown in. Mm. And then you're not, you're not giving it the justice it deserves. Mm. Um, and it's not assisting the website the way it should. Yeah, well, the, the big thing there is if without that, um, the, the architecture itself creates basically the plan. And everyone can kind of see where they kind of fit within the piece around whether it's content, video. Um, they can all see that and how that's going to kind of fit in, which means that everyone's on the same page. And you don't get Literally. people sort of, yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pun intended. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, it, where you, you get to see um, you get to see that in, in place. And so then as things are uh, sort of created, each person kind of gets involved, you're not then wondering about or, or making assumptions ar around how it's going to get utilized or how that's going to fit within yeah. the actual site itself. Yeah. Um, so, it, and that's where we see the projects often going awry is because people are going, oh, well, I think it should be this way. And then I was going, yeah, no, I think it should be this, this way. way. Uh, whereas the architecture helps bring that together and say, well, no, this is it. This is what we've agreed on in terms yeah. of the approach to it. And so then each of us can then just work towards filling in the gaps and making yeah. sure that it comes I mean, alive. Is that essentially going back to your reference? It's almost like the uh, architecture plans for the house, right? I mean, it's essentially you would want that before you ever went in and started digging spending money. and spending yeah. money. Yeah. So we've covered the what and yeah, the why. Right, yeah. Let's talk about the how. Um, and Mike, again, you're probably the best place to start, where it's like, how do people approach architecture? Yeah, um, often it'll be your web design team that will actually kind of nurture you through that whole process. Um, but that being said, it's really helpful, uh, especially in the briefing process, uh, is that if people can come with some ideas, um, it can be as simple as putting together a PowerPoint presentation uh, and just basically taking snippets of different sites and just throwing that on the page and then commenting about, oh, I like this, I like these yeah, elements, yeah. I like how this kind, of, this kind of works. I was thinking about this style for our, our page or this is, I like the way this is sort of approached. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that's how we will do the site, but it gives us an understanding of where they're at in terms mm -hmm. of thinking about the site. Um, and then with um, PowerPoint too, you can easily just create different blocks. Mm. Just, you know, it's, it's, yeah. not, it's not terribly complicated. Uh, and that's a real great starting point. And then we might use more sophisticated architecture tools, uh, especially if we're develop developing apps or something that, that you really need to understand the usability and, and uh, uh, the user UX. experience yeah. and stuff and, and sort of how that all kind of comes together. But for most people, um, just starting with something as simple as PowerPoint or even just a piece of paper or a grid yep. book and you just start sketching it out and stuff really gives us a good starting point of where what they're thinking and we'll do the same thing and kind of yep. sketch through that and then talk about okay as they go through the journey as the customer or the user goes through this journey on this page mm -hmm. these are the different things they can interact with this is where they might flow um, and it's an interesting one where we might look at it almost a little counterintuitive where you think about call to actions and you'll get Plenty of you know marketing pundits out there, or especially online, where they'll go, oh, you know, you can't have too many call to actions. Let's just throw yeah, yeah, call let's to just throw five everywhere. in the first, yeah. And, and you think, well, hang on a second, let's just think this through. Let's think through who the customer is. Let's think about your business and your brand and identity. Um, because if you think about it, even going to a store, like look at Apple for instance and stuff. In terms of, they're a great example where, you know, they don't have checkouts and registers and all that sort of stuff that you've got to go to 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 to, to purchase. Uh, and they're not sitting there saying, oh, "So you're ready to buy? Yeah, 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 can, I, yeah. can you buy? You want to buy today? Yep, yeah, cool. Just just head over here, or yeah. can I swipe your card? You ready? <laughs> no, it's basically you've got to experience it and then say, you know what, I'm ready to buy, and now. I will make that it's decision. decision. To go next yes. Now you want to make sure it's nice and convenient. It's easy yeah. to find someone to make that purchase, so we don't want to make it hard. But we don't don't want to have too many times in the in the site where we're constantly berating people to say, "Buy now, come mm. and buy our product." Mm. It seems desperate, whereas you want them to really experience it, and then and so when we think about the architecture, we want to make sure we have very clear call to actions, very clear outcomes from the page. But we don't kind of continue to bombard them with 
Yeah. Hey, buy now. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Ariel now, That's I mean, cool. like, yeah. webs, you know, the world has moved well beyond the point where you just had to have a website and people would come in yeah. and look. Now, yeah. now it's not okay just to have a no. website. You've actually it's got definitely to have not it, okay yeah, just you've, to have a website. You've got to have a website mm. that is really um, simple to use. Mm -hmm. It's got really, as you've said, really good architecture, mm -hmm. but it's intuitive. Visually, yeah, it's intuitive. It's visually engaging, so that yes. when people come on, they automatically get a connection to your brand, but they get a really good experience. So, and, and people don't like clutter anymore. No. I mean, like, white space. We're, we're bombarded with some of it. So a lot of white space, mm. really simple messages around, yeah. um, this is what we do, this is how we add value to you, and take them through a bit of a journey. So there's a lot of things now where, um, yeah, you, anybody can, look, there's so many tools out there. Anybody yeah. can go and design their own um, website and put it up. But if you really want to get traction and you're making it part of the marketing strategy, it is the core of the mm -hmm. way people engage with you now. That's that it just won't cut it. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. sorry. It's true. And, <laughs> it just won't cut it. Yeah, like and it's not about yeah. selling our, our no, side. It's, it's, just, a, it's just about like making the right decision as a business. If somebody says you know? ho hum on your website when they visit it, it's it's like, you know, if somebody looks at it and says, oh, that's good. That's not good. It's got to be, yeah. that's great. You've got yeah. to leave the impression now so that somebody goes yeah. and immediately they connect and they go, right, yeah, that's really unique and I'm going to stay with you to, ex to spend my time looking at the next level. And so many parts yeah. have to come together. The architecture has to come yeah. together. The messaging has to come together. The engaging mm. content has to come together. The overall design to make people feel connected to the brand and has to come together. There's a reason why. It's yeah. simple because there's choice. Yeah, like yeah. it's there's so, so much easy choice. on the yeah. web. On, on on you just Google and you say, "I need this. I need a financial planner." Right? Yeah. Fifty thousand financial planners come up. You click on the first twenty. Right? If not and you go, that much, uh, and you go, <laughs> nope, nope, no, 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 no. Oh, that one looks good. I'll yeah. give that a second thought. Yeah. And that like. If you don't think your customers are doing that, yeah. they are. Yeah. They are. <laughs> yeah. 100% yeah, are. Yeah. And because we, we seem to go, we put our business hat on and we go, no, they don't. And then we, we put our customer hat on and we go and buy lunch. And we yeah. go, no, 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 no. no, no. no. <laughs> right? Just only, like, so that's what happens is yeah. you've got like, you've got this happening. Yeah. And yet we forget as businesses, no, they will no, love no, us. No. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to love us. And, and I, I'm constantly revising my website based yeah. on like, Tools like Hotjar and all these kind of things that are saying people are staying on this nine minutes, people are staying, yeah. staying on this 30 seconds and they're bouncing. Yeah. Right, that's not working. What's wrong with it? Yeah. And, and that's what brands, they have, it's not like a, oh, we'll get to it. And that's you what you to. can't yeah. do with a template. And that's why it's really good exactly. to go bespoke so that you can really grow with your brand um, and have that capability of adding and changing mm. and also just making sure that when you click on it, you're actually getting to the page fast. Yeah. And it's not taking a long time to load. Um, and that you have backlinks and that you have all the structures you need um, to have a successful, well-run website. And that's, that's actually a great setup for, how does the SEO come into, sorry, I'm just oh, like, you're just, I saw his face go, what? How does, this, like, how does the how SEO sort of yeah. build into, because I've, I've done it with you, so I know what you do, but like, how does the SEO sort of play into that architecture and building the framework upwards? Yeah, well, that, um, that's a critical component, actually, that we undertake during the architecture phase. So one of the key, key uh, steps is to do the keyword research, yep. to look at what people are actually searching for. What are the yeah. key keywords that they're using? Where's, one, where's the volume? But also, where is the intent? Mm. And where do we want to talk to people in terms of, you think about the buyer's journey, that's the way we sort of always look at it. Uh, and it works so nicely with search, where you go, are they searching because they've got a problem and they're searching for a solution to that problem? Or is it that they're more in the consideration phase where they're looking at, they know what, they're, they know what the solution is and they're just looking at different providers that can mm. provide that solution for them? Because um, that will heavily change the structure of the site, the pages that we create, because yeah. it's different keywords that you're going to use, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, architecture is a critical component to that, to think, exactly. well, what pages do we need to create to then talk to people at that stage in their buyer's journey? Um, and often, you know, the, the, well, the best sites kind of talk to people at each phase yep. in the buyer's journey. Yep. Um, and so then what we're doing is we're marrying those keywords with the different pages and say, okay, these pages are designed to target those particular keywords. And so then we can make sure that the structures are in place, whether it's the URL structures, title structures, headings, all of those things within the page are already pre-planned beforehand. And so then SEO is not this thing that 
you know, the SEO you guy comes it. in yeah. at the end and goes, uh, we yeah. create site we'll guys, but now we're going to have to change a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. There must yeah. be people out there now thinking, oh, this sounds like there's a lot of effort that goes in and <sighs> there's, uh, you know, yeah. Oh my God, Don't we I'm know scared. it? Yeah, but, yeah, I'm but, scared yeah, of doing yeah. this. It's a bigger project than I thought it might be. I just wanted, I just wanted a website. Why can't I just get a website? And I think, but That's to me, it's the reasons we keep talking about it. It's, it's like if you just get something that you do yourself, or you just go to purely a developer, you won't get the design element. If you don't, really, it you've got to ask yourself um, whether the biggest. Um, focus of your marketing strategy, which is your website, can afford yeah. to just be your yeah. website. Yeah, and look, mm. let's put it in a way that people can yeah. relate to. So think of a bricks and mortar store. Yeah. Right? People are more comfortable with that. So if, if you could just go, you know what, I've got a space in Sydney, uh, I can just, I've got a slot, let's put like some bricks up, right? And then people will go, eh, right? And then you can go, let's put a window, right? And then you start putting pieces together. And then if, you're, if you go, you know what, I'm happy with that, Think about your customers. They'll go there and go, yeah, this is not too bad, but I'm not feeling quite comfortable. But then the more you invest in the proper architecture and the build and nice lighting and all these kind of things, yeah. suddenly you're creating this really appealing space. And it's, you've got like brands have to think of their online presence as the same as their, their yeah, like exactly. if you're a customer, would you go into a real estate agency and go and like dingy lighting and things like that and go, we're, we're all good. And you'd be like, <laughs> I'm selling my home here, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. anything, would you go into a food and go, oh, that kitchen's not quite developed. Um, that's a little bit of a worry that my food's coming from there. That's, that's the same as your yeah. online presence. Like you've got to think in that terms. It definitely yeah. sets up your expectations, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, oh, the, 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 what yeah. you what, what you're going to get from that business. Yeah. Uh, and if you're looking at being a low-cost provider, if you just want to be a simple commodity, or easy service that competes with a few others, and they choose you, well, great, that's fine. That's that fine. works for you. But if you really want to sort of stand out, yeah. be something a bit different, then spending that bit of extra time. So I would so say that you look at it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you low-cost providers spend as much time. I would in say you look like a Kogan or someone like that. Look at the amount of time they invest mm -hmm. in their whole marketing strategy and the way that they develop their own website. It's all designed to speak to the customer. Yeah, that they are a low-cost provider because yeah. they want the customer to feel like they're getting a really good bargain. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean they haven't invested a lot of time and energy to Everything. appear like that yeah. and to ensure that the customer gets what they want from the site mm -hmm. easily. Sorry, Ariel. Oh, I was question. just going to say to end it off is just what should people go out and ask mm -hmm. for when they go to a uh, website development agency or marketing company? Well, the key thing is to look at what their process is going to be. So it's one thing to go to a, a web design company and say, okay, I need a website, it's, you know, 10 pages, I want it to look good, here's a couple of sites that I like the look of, can you build that? You'll get a whole range of different prices and it's worth definitely shopping around and, and sort of talking to a few different providers because you will get a, a massive oh, difference yeah. in cost. Yeah, it uh, <laughs> and it doesn't mean that they're not justified. They're absolutely, with some mm. of the, the sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they're not, but more often than not, there's a reason why those costs are there. Um, and so what you want to then look at is not just the output of what you're going to get, but think about the journey and what they're going to cover. And if they're going to jump straight into, you know, I'm just going to create a design for you, um, you provide all the content and, and, and we'll see yeah, what we can yeah. kind of slap together for you, that should be a bit of a red flag to say, hang on a second, you're not really thinking this mm. through. And so what's going to come out at the end, there's going to be a whole lot of problems and it's going to be very disjointed. The design is not going to necessarily match with the content. It's not going to match with the imagery. And then we're going to sort of be trying to shove some videos in yeah. somewhere and stuff. <laughs> it, that's not going to be a great experience. Whereas if they talk about this, okay, we're going to get to know you first, get to understand your business, understand who your key customers are. And then we're going to sort of look at the structure of your site and then get through into the design, then get into the, the, the con content. And we might do the design and content at the same time you know that that journey is going to lead to a really good outcome. Yeah. Uh, and, and so if you're it. just looking for that, if you just you know, find out what their process is going to be, that'll put you in a pretty good stead. Great. Cool. Thank you. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. That was, yeah. yeah, look, there's boundless places we could <laughs> yeah, take yeah, this yeah, yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we'll end it there. Thank you so much for joining us in this episode, and we will see you in the next one. Thanks.